Hello, welcome to today's video. We're going to be doing a Q&A and as you can see, I'm not alone. I have a special guest. I have finally, after many, many months of trying, convinced Lauren to come on a YouTube video and this will be just the beginning. So anyways, Lauren is going to be asking me the questions and I'm going to be answering all your questions. We're gonna try and do all of them in one episode, but to be honest, there's, we've got 50 comments. So chances are there's going to be a part one and a part two and even potentially a part three, but who cares because Lauren's here, so woohoo! <laughs> hey guys! Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really happy that I'm not doing this on my own anymore because for me, it was always me sitting here recording, Lauren doing her work over there and it's just a bit awkward, but now it's not. So before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and of course, like the video just solely based on the fact that Lauren's in it. But besides that, I asked on the community section, I asked, you know, ask away, ask any questions that you want. And we got quite a lot of submissions as you can see here. So Lauren is going to be in charge and I'm going to sit back and pretty much just answer them as best as I can. I might have to skip a few, so take it away. Okay, the first question is from Riley. He actually has quite a few questions. Riley, um, classic. Four questions. Oh, the last one's cool. Um, his first question is, is drop ship there? Nice. <laughs> is drop ship This is your intro. That was a great intro into YouTube. That's a brilliant start <laughs> into your YouTube career. Stop it. Is drop shipping still worth it? Interesting question, Riley. Um, is drop shipping? Yeah. I mean, why not? It, I wouldn't say any business isn't worth it. Every business has potential depending on how you go about it. So there's plenty of people still making a lot of money on dropshipping, but there's also plenty of people not making money on dropshipping. So yes, I think it's worth it, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to succeed. You still could, you still could fail. Nice. Um, Thank you. The next one's about YouTube. How do you remain consistent on YouTube? Um, that's a great question. I've been doing YouTube now for four years and when I first started, and even for the first three years and about six months, it was really hard because I would make a video every single day and I basically got no views. Staying consistent there was, it was hard, but it's just, you know, I read a lot of books, a lot of motivational books. I, I just, I just, you know, persisted. I, I didn't want to give up. I, there were periods of time where I gave up for a couple of months, but I just, you know, you, it's about fighting through all of that negativity, all of the lows, and, and you know, eventually getting to a point where I am now, where my motivation stems from you guys watching these videos. So the fact that you know I'm getting people actually watching, commenting, it means the world to me. And uh, that I would say now is my motivation. Number three, what was your reaction when you first started earning more than 10K a month? Oh, that's <laughs> a good question. Uh, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. When I first started business when I was 18, I left my gap year, came home to start print on demand. As you know, I'm sure you've seen the video, it will pop up somewhere here. I made 70 grand in that, those three months. So I never actually went from, you know, just slowly progressing up to 10,000 a month. It just blew up. Um, how did I, re was it, how did I react? How did you, what was your reaction? My reaction was, I have never had this much money in my life and I went shopping. <laughs> I know, as sad, yeah, as, it, yeah, as sad as it is to say, since then, um, I've learned how to use my money a bit better. And for example, with our Amazon FBA business, I slowly took that up, or we slowly took that up to 10,000. So yeah, it was a great feeling, the, the, the sense of financial stability, not financial freedom, because financial freedom doesn't really exist depending, it depends on your, your circumstances, but financial stability was really nice, you know, having that there. And the last one from Riley is, would you rather visit Ibiza or Hawaii? Should we do this at the same time? Yeah. Three. On on go? On go. Three, two, one. Hawaii. Hawaii. Nice. Yeah, okay. We didn't <laughs> plan mean? that. No, I, I, Hawaii just sounds better. Anyways, moving on. Come on. Okay. From Andy. Does your location matter in terms of organic traffic? Um... Not really, no. I mean, it completely depends on where your website is. It doesn't depend on where you are as a person. I mean, if I'm in England, but my Amazon business is, you know, Amazon US, it's in America. The fact that I'm in England is not going to mean that UK people go and see my stuff because my website's on like America's internet. 
uh, dot com, um, I'll attract a lot more American visitors. Likewise with UK, Germany, wherever you are. Yeah, ah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay, Helda, how do you keep motivated while there isn't, while there aren't any sales or just a few sales? Okay, so this is a very similar question to Riley. Um, it's about pulling through and kind of doing it not for the money, doing it because you love it. I know that's a very airy fairy answer and most people don't work because they love their job, they work because they need money to survive. So in terms of motivation, it's it's finding it's it's finding that balance of how much do you really like your job versus how much do you need the money. If you hate your job so much but you make a ton of money, brilliant. If you hate your job so much and you make no money, you're gonna find really hard to get motivation. So you need to find that balance of doing what you love and trying to make a bit of money. And you know, the, the more you do what you love, the more money you should hopefully make. And just a, a quick tip, if you are in a job that you don't like so much and it's only making an okay, bit about, uh, okay amount of money, try and get a hobby or a side hustle that you do enjoy that maybe doesn't make very much money just so that you are going through the day doing something you enjoy. And then the motivation, you'll find it there. Thanks, I appreciate all this, <laughs> you know, positivity going on. Okay. Hi, Shimmy. As a non-US citizen and red bubble... Oh, hi, Shimmy. As a non-US citizen and a red... Mm, uh... Are you having trouble reading? <laughs> and they put commas in the wrong places. It uh, throws uh... you off. <laughs> hi, Shimmy. Uh... <laughs> hi, Shimmy. As a non-US citizen and Redbubble being a US business entity, how did you get on with Redbubble and US taxes? The US normally charges a withholding tax of up to 30%. I'm learning new things every single day. <laughs> um, I have a limited company in the UK and when I do business in the US, I have to do a, I want to say it's an IB8N or IBN8 form. Don't quote me on that. I can't remember the, the exact thing of the form. But that allows me to actually make money in the US and pay UK taxes. I don't actually have to pay any US taxes. Um, and sometimes when you make money in the US, you don't actually have to pay UK taxes. So it's all a bit iffy. But with a question like that, speak to your accountant. I'm not um, an accountant expert, especially in taxes. I bloody hate taxes. Okay, what is the best way to deal with people who steal your designs? and the best way to find the thieves who have stolen your design. Oh God, <laughs> I have no idea how you find them. Maybe, you know, if you have a design, you can search for it on Google and see if anyone else is copying you. How to deal with them, maybe send them an email, send, or first send an email to the company that they've uploaded it to, tell them you were first, whatever. If they say you've got to speak to the person, speak to the person. If they don't budge, maybe send a, not fake, but like a scare cease and desist letter. And if there's still no budging and you want to take it further, maybe small county court or something like that. I've never had to deal with this. And truth be told, if someone did steal my design, I would just move on. Um, unless that design is making me millions, oh, unless that design is making me millions, I would, wouldn't be bothered to pursue it because if you have a look at print on demand as a whole, most people who make money on print on demand is because they have so many t-shirts, like so, so many t-shirts rather than just one hit wonders. So if you've got 500 t-shirts, who cares if someone steals one of them, honestly? It's not going to make much of a difference in your income. Okay, this person is thinking about setting up my first affiliate website. How do I find an affiliate niche that I can build my site around? That's a great question. I love that question. It got five likes. Oh, five you likes. Liked it. Six. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I would say pick your affiliate niche based on what you like. Um, that's the easy way to do it. And going back on, I don't remember who asked, but about how to get the motivation, right? The best way to get motivation is to do something you love, right? So when you're setting up your affiliate site to promote stuff, it's a lot easier to promote what you love. For example, if you wanted me to sell you a car, I could do it very easily. I love cars and I know everything about them. If you wanted me to sell you a hot tub, I'm going to struggle. Right, so if you if you become an affiliate for programs that you like, so let's say you're a graphic designer, then maybe become an affiliate of Photoshop or Canva or place it. You're going to not only enjoy promoting those products, you're going to find it a lot easier to promote those products because you love them. So pick something you like. Maybe write a whole list of hobbies. See what affiliate uh, uh, company what well, companies can go with it that have affiliate deals, and make a website based around that. Okay, Alina. Was that asks, nice as well? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, good. 
<laughs> Alina asks, any idea why on Redbubble they add shipping costs for each item that you buy? I find that not only the products are expensive, but also the shipping costs are really high. It's ridiculous. Print-on-demand shipping is an absolute joke. I have no idea. In fact, I had, I, I made a video today, I had three um, envelopes of stickers. Two of the envelopes had one sticker and one of the envelopes had like over 100 stickers. So only like 78 stickers. I have no idea why they do that. It's really, really annoying. Um, I wish I had answers for you, but I don't. So I'm sorry about that. Okay, Brady. I did Facebook ads and I think that since doing the ads, they have limited my organic reach. I used to get more views on Instagram before the ads. Now I get a lot less. Have you noticed this with your Instagram posts or do I just need better hashtags? Um, truth be told, Instagram has gone down a lot in terms of people actually liking photos and we both noticed that. We talked about this. Yeah. We've noticed that. Um, when I'm scrolling through Instagram, I'm liking a lot less than I used to and you are as well, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. I just them yeah. i like them in my head I exactly don't double tap. Uh, i know right that that idea of double tapping has completely gone out the window and i think a lot less people are liking things on instagram and i think for instagram the big thing isn't your post it's going to be your stories you want to build up your stories and build up the number of people watching those stories so yes i have noticed a lot less engagement on my posts, but i've noticed, noticed a lot more engagement on my stories because that is how people are interacting nowadays in 2020 you always have to stay up to date and relevant with you know how people want to see your content but you don't think by doing ads he's limited his organic reach yes i missed most of the question i yeah. apologize <laughs> um i don't think ads is affecting your individual posts that would be very weird um what you might be noticing is you've gotten used to getting more likes and you can't attribute which likes have come from the ad and which likes have come from the actual post and then you're like hmm I'm getting less likes when I don't do an ad, but actually those how many likes you normally get. Abhishek asks, which is better, Etsy or Shopify? Sh Shopify? <laughs> Shopify <laughs> is um, two completely separate platforms. Um, Etsy, you are kind of... Oh, he says profit-wise and quality-wise. Well, I don't know what you mean by quality-wise, because if you're using it with a third-party print-on-demand company or your own products, in terms of website quality, Shopify is your own website. Etsy is using someone else's platform, so they can close you down, they can ban you, they can do whatever they want. Shopify is your website. So if I'm being completely honest, I don't think they're comparable, because it's like it's like comparing, you know, your website that's selling t-shirts to Redbubble. It doesn't really work. Um, both are platforms that you can sell products on, right? But one platform is yours and one platform is a big organization's. Okay. Lazarus asks three questions. Ooh. Well, after, after these three questions, we are going to end part one because part we are one. approaching 15 minutes and we'll do a part two because we this was fun. We might need a part three. <laughs> How many That's questions? Have, oh gosh! All right. Well, anyways, go on. Ask these three questions from Lazarus. Um, okay. Firstly, can you be successful only with photography designs on Redbubble? No idea. Never tried it. I don't see why not. You can be successful with anything, really. Um. So. I have no idea. Yes. No. Maybe. <laughs> helpful number two any advice for new ideas and designs it's difficult for me to keep uploading designs every week um honestly use that redbubble uh tag tool that i made a video on a while ago that's a brilliant way to find out what's upcoming because you've got the green arrows going up and the red arrows going down um in a video coming out next week i actually used the dog niche because that was showing a lot of promise and it's a really cool video you're gonna love it um but, but yeah, I, I, I can't just give you niches. They need to be researched. And the last one, can I upload designs with motivational quotes that I see on Instagram or copy heard quotes or is it illegal for copyright? Where? Number three. Can I upload designs with What's a heard quote? Oh, her, uh, as in quotes comment. that you've heard. Like... Boris Johnson saying comment. something, yeah. whatever. Um, like celebrities quotes. Yeah, stuff. Uh, can you upload quotes? That's a really good question. I've never actually known the answer to that. Again, I would ask someone like a professional, like a lawyer or someone, but um, if it's, I think if it's, a, not, if it's a, a quote that's not by a famous person or anything like that, it's absolutely fine. If it's a quote from like a movie or a song, I would avoid, but if it's just a, a person has said something, 
right? In like in a speech or something. I don't see why that would be copyright. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> um... Thanks for that. <laughs> Like, if you saw some, like, your immediate response would be, like, what? Does it sound like it would be copyright? Mm, I feel like stuff from... I don't think stuff... I don't think stuff celebrities say is, like, copyright. It's just speak, like, people People speak speaking, the whole time. But I feel like stuff from, like, songs, definitely not. Movies, Movies TV shows, stuff like that. Like, the random, like, cutesy quotes you see around. I'd yeah. say they're good to go. Yeah. I would, I would agree. I concur. Good. And there's all of those. All right, amazing. Well, look, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, then, well, give it a like. But also, let me know in the comments down below what you think of our guest host, Lauren. And if you want to see her in more videos, you nice guys, you've got it. What? Nice comments only. Well, you can say anything. <laughs> Show some love in the comments, and hopefully I can get her on more videos, because this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed making a video with you. It was an experience. It was, a, And it's not over, because we're doing part two. <laughs> Uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you in part two. Thank you very much. Bye! <laughs>